For most people, they don't give it a second thought to use a computer. But if your eyes, your ears and your movement is not what it used to be, then you might need some help. In this video, we're going to be looking at some accessibility applications. First up is KMAG for KDE Magnifier. Now this will make the screen larger, uh, roughly about where the cursor is. For those who may be not able to see the text, you can make the font bigger, but sometimes that's not enough. So with KMAG, I'm just going to uh, show you an example. And here's the... I'll just move that there a bit. Right. You can see where the cursor is moving. Well, where the arrow is, it will magnify to your own setting. So you can make it bigger if you want the immediate area around it. So if you was, say, for instance, reading uh, online text, it will uh, it will help greatly if you find it hard to see it. There's some basic functions. You can change the colors. Now this is for people with certain types of color blindness, which I think is a fantastic addition. But this will allow you to change the color to make it easier for people with color blindness to actually make out the text a bit easier. And another application uh, related to sight is the contrast check. Now this will help you pick, if you want to change the contrast, the easiest settings for, um, I don't know, more legibility. And at the top there, um, you've got the uh, contrast checker, favorite colors, etc. There's the about. So if you find a good combination, you can set it as a favorite. And you can change it manually, or you can just randomize and see if you pick one that uh, suits you. And in that red box, it will actually say, look, perfect for normal and large text. Uh, and it gives you recommendations based upon the settings. And I'm just clicking random here. But if you want to actually make some settings, then, you know, you can tweak it to your uh, heart's content. Or make it completely gaudy, whichever you want to do. And when you're happy with it, mark it as a favorite. And then use that in any settings or theming that you want to use. It's a simple idea, but it's a brilliant little program. Next, we have KDE itself. Now, the thing is with KDE, it's uh, often criticized for having too many settings, but in this case, it's a good thing. If we search for color schemes, there's a lot available, so if you just type in the search for contrast, it will bring up breeze high contrast, and we'll select that. And that may be easy on the eyes if uh, the white background is hard to read. And another setting you can do is change the font size, these all seem pretty simple, but if they were not there in the actual desktop you were using, you'd notice it. So let's make it a little bit bigger. You can use, uh, I don't know, 19, 18, 17, or whatever size you want. I think the aim here is to make it easier to read if you find it difficult. And uh, my old eyes, well, sometimes it's difficult. Next is the icons. Now, the size of icons are a default. Uh, they're pretty unreasonable, but if you want them to be bigger... I just go down to this part, and it's a simple amount of changing the scale. It's really nice and handy. Next, if you can change the shortcuts. If you find it uh, difficult to remember what does what in your menu, a shortcut can uh, make it so much easier. And if we actually go into the accessibility tab itself, then there's a whole host of uh, additions that we can make use of. You can have a, a visual bell if, say, for instance, you can't hear the, uh, the usual ding of a computer bell. You can make the flash screen any color that you want, and it will flash up for 500 milliseconds. So that's very useful. You can uh, customize one if you wish. Modifier keys. If you find it difficult to press certain key combinations, uh, with sticky keys. Uh, sticky keys, oh, you don't have to say, for instance, you don't have to press Shift and Alt. You can just press Shift and then press Alt, and the Shift will stick down while you're pressing Alt. Um, you've got slow keys if you find it difficult with typing, and bounce keys. So it's all, you know, really, really useful if your dexterity is not what it used to be uh, when first we were using a computer keyboard. Activation gestures, another way of uh, getting input into the uh, computer, and different types of notification. Just to let you know that if uh, some accessibility function has been switched on mouse navigation 
you can move the pointer with a keyboard. Now, this is very good if you find it difficult to actually hold a mouse, which some people may do. And you can move it with the arrow key, so I'm going to move it now. I'm moving left and right on the uh, number pad. That's down. Oh, and I'm pressing diagonal, which is the left key and the up key. Very good. And screen reader. Now, it's using Orca, but I'll be showing you Orca uh, later. But that's a, a particularly useful uh, addition. And that's it for that one. So it's very impressive. Let's press apply to make sure I reset everything back. Really good. Next, we're going to test Orca out. And unfortunately, when I was recording this, I used OBS to record this part. And the sound, there was a lot of interference coming in. So, unfortunately, I think the computer voice won't be that loud. As you can see, it's reading out some of the text on the FreeBSD site. When I was actually listening to this, it was a lot clearer and there was no hissing sound. But you can see, it will be very useful for those who want to read online newspapers or some kind of text. And the computer voice will assist if you find it difficult to read uh, some text. There are some tweaks that's needed to be done with the uh, voice because it, it can read everything. And here are some of the configurations that you can make to uh, the speech synthesizer. You can change the voice uh, to different types, different nationalities. Speech, so you can change the way that some of the words are sounding um, and the duration, etc. Braille, um, I, if you've got Braille support, it will connect to the computer and it will get that going. Key echo, key bindings. If you want to fine tune some of the words or put in some custom ones. And text attributes. Next, we're looking at a virtual keyboard. Now, I'm going to type uh, a little sentence in uh, normally as I type on the keyboard. I'm not the world's fastest typer, so um, I'm, I can go as fast as I can. But that is me typing it with uh, my hands. Next, we're going to use a virtual keyboard. And the reason why you would use this is in case you want to use the mouse pointer instead of typing. Say, for instance, you've got RSI. It might be difficult for you to type the keys. So we're going to look at the uh, virtual keyboard, uh, Florence virtual keyboard. And it's, it's nice. It's nice and clear. And uh, There is a certain amount of uh, transparency behind it. And the buttons are highlighted nicely when you go over them. So yes, um, we'll start doing it. I'll put uh, this. It does take longer doing this way, but if, like say, if your dexterity is not what it used to be, this may be the best way for you to try and uh, type on screen. So obviously I speeded that up. But yes, very good. Uh, there's for your, uh, your special keys. Space, obviously. And a small, it's not the most complicated configuration, but it allows you to change some behavior and colors, etc. Yeah, nice. Uh, focus zoom, I'm not going to change that much. And the window, transparency, let's have a look, see what that does. Uh, oh, yes, it shows up behind it, very nice. And, oh, well, I don't know what it changes, but it changes something. So it's transparent. Uh, behavior, layout of your function, and numeral, numeric keys. And, yes, very nice indeed. Oh, and I press the wrong one there. That is a handy little program. Even though I only covered five uh, applications... And I didn't really cover the entire gamut of uh, requirements that some people may have. There are some um, things which are missing. 
Uh, the Braille support is something which I can't test. I haven't got a Braille machine, and I don't know how it would work connecting up to FreeBSD. Um, there didn't seem to be any kind of Braille generator, for a better word, uh, within the ports or the packages. So that part I can't test. Uh, the audio part, well, you know, you heard the interference. I need to really alter my settings on that. But, you know, the speech synthesizer worked well. Uh, with some additional tweaks, I think uh, you could get it going much better than I could. And the visual part, well, I mean, the visual and the dexterity, you know, the on-screen keyboard, the way that you can magnify and change colors, etc. I think that's that's pretty cool. But it's something which doesn't get touched upon a lot, uh, accessibility for computer systems. And it's good that FreeBSD has a choice, uh, a good selection. All the major operating systems do, some more than others, and it's good that FreeBSD is there as well. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful in some way, and thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Yeah.